Alan McCauley. I'm at Pray It Off in Syracuse, New York without a microphone. And I even cleaned it really, really well. Maybe we cleaned it too hard. So anyway, tonight we're going to talk about trauma. And what's interesting is last night, many of us in the group went to a talk, if you will, on trauma. And um, it was done by a, a therapist. And I got some things out of it. And I noticed that she talked about some of the own, her own trauma in her life. But you can't do it all in an hour and a half. And the majority of her talk was on uh, relationships and how to build relationships so that you have a sound, a sound foundation to deal with trauma in your life. Because the worst thing about having trauma is if you don't have someone that can help you get through it. So I thought that was very beneficial. But I also wanted to talk a little bit tonight about reactions to trauma, how to deal with trauma. Because I think a lot of trauma and people who are victims of trauma end up overeating or drinking too much or going into denial, or not living the happy, abundant life that Jesus wants us to live. So there's different responses to trauma. Some people fight it. They have an angry outburst. You know, someone dies unexpectedly in the family and they want to blame someone. So they, it's all your fault. It's all your fault. If you were watching him or if you were doing this, if you were doing that, blame, blame, anger, anger. Or they're a bully. You know, maybe they had un unresolved trauma and they're bullying other people. Usually bullies on the playground have very unhappy home lives. They have their own dysfunctional alcoholic parents, abusive parents, and they turn around and go to the playground and bully other children. Not always. Or some children who become bullies have disengaged parents who work all the time and they, they don't do anything with them. Now, I did major in social work in college. I'm not a therapist, but I have done an awful lot of, mm -hmm. of research over the years in trauma because I, unfortunately, have experienced my fair share of it. And guess what? Who hasn't? I mean, this therapist sat up there last night and she said, well, I was in a plane and all of a sudden I look out and the engine was on fire and the other engine fell off and then we were crashing and the whole plane said they are father together and then we crashed. I'm like, what? <laughs> and then she says, and when I was 10, I was sexually abused. And I'm like, what? I mean, she just put it out there. And I find that there's great power in putting it out there. So many of us keep our traumas to ourselves. They're compartmentalized. And we, and we have a flight from it. That's the next response. We overwork. We overthink. We have panic attacks. We suffer from anxiety. We want to be a perfectionist because we don't want anything bad to happen again. And other people, they freeze. They stay the same place, the same, everything's got to be the same, they're numb. They, you know, my uh, uncle, and I had a lot of them, so I'm not naming names, was very abusive. And my aunt literally was numb. She just talked like this, yeah, it's all good, yeah. She had disengaged. And then the people-pleasing, codependent, can't say no, who avoids conflict at any cost, that's another reaction to trauma. And, and we're going to talk about it because certain life events affect our weight. You know, some of us have weight issues because it's genetic. You ever look at a family, usually you don't see skinny, 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 fat. Usually you don't see skinny, fat, skinny, fat, skinny, fat. Sometimes you see chunk, 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 chunk. And that's our family. Now, is it nature? Is it nurture? Is it a combination of both? Well, I think it is a combination of both. I do think there's certain people that maybe genetically they can't handle uh, gluten or dairy or whatever. When my sister and I give up dairy, gluten, and sugar, we both lose weight. We have the same genetics. 
also there's the puberty factor you know we go through puberty our bodies start changing some people start gaining weight then i know i did also aging when especially athletic men and women they get a little older and they eat the same way they ate when they were on the team boy you start gaining weight then women who've had babies they want to get in their wedding dress after five children there's a few women who can do that i don't know their names <laughs> also not enough sleep we talk about sleep a lot underlying health conditions whenever someone says to me i'm on steroids i say oh my gosh forget it you know uh anyone who's on certain medications certain anxiety medications certain depression medications have a predisposition predisposition to gain weight quitting smoking i smoked from 1972 until 1997 and then in 1997, and I smoked, man. I didn't just smoke. I smoked. I was like, whitch, 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 whitch. I, do, I don't do anything. I don't say, I think I have one or two cigarettes. Oh, no. A couple packs a day. Then in 1997, when I was, I don't know, what was I then? About 40-something. My mother, I was 47, I think, and my mother was 67. We both decided to quit. Me, because I thought it was unhealthy. Her, because she thought it was too expensive. If cigarettes were cheap, she'd still be smoking. She's 89. So we both decided we would go on nicotine gum. So then I started chewing nicotine gum in 1997, and so did she. Fast forward to 2019, I quit the nicotine gum in 2019. But all right, so from 72 to 2019, I had nicotine in my body. And when I chewed the nicotine gum, I didn't chew one or two pieces a day. I had 15, 20 pieces a day. I was addicted. Addicted. I had gotten down to my lowest weight in 2017 and 2018. I maintained it. And then in 2019, when I gave up that nicotine gum, then I started having trouble because my heart rate plummeted. My heart rate was 62 beats a minute and went down to 49. Wow. They sent me to a cardiologist and I kept saying, it's just because I quit smoking. I mean, I quit the nicotine gum. And so um, there's nothing wrong with me except my body is slow. The nicotine sped me up. So now that I don't have that, it's harder to lose weight. So those of you who have quit smoking and gained weight, your body, it, it does make a difference. Also, you know, there's different social. When you're in college, you're like, eat, drink, and be merry. I'm young. I can do whatever I want. And then when you're married, you feel like you have responsibilities. I got the kids, I got to get a job, I got that. And then you have children, that's a whole different ball of wax. And you're working, you got kids, you're, you're stressed, you're trying to make meals, you're trying to do this. And then there's jobs and commute time, and, and that puts more stress on you. Then all of a sudden, some, some life experience experiences come in a death in the family a sick child and all these things and you're already stressed where is it going to hit your weight and then retirement so many people think oh when I retire I can really concentrate on my weight because I won't be working the kids will be grown up but then you're out to lunch all the time and having <laughs> dinner with your friends and going to this party and that party <coughs> you retired people are more active than anyone I know and then family holidays. Let's factor that in because they're huge. It's a holiday. I need to eat cookies. I need to have what I want. And then sometimes your neighborhood, our neighborhood's like, hey, how you doing? No one's forcing food on me in my neighborhood. I don't know about yours. Income level. We can afford healthier foods. When I was growing up, we couldn't. We couldn't. We had to have the macaroni and the pasta. I can have the more expensive food now because we can afford it. When we have all these other factors, getting older, having babies, uh, retiring, or having the kids, or trauma, and, and then you add trauma, it's just so hard to cope. And we end up being anxious, depressed, or lonely, having stress eating and weight gain. One of the things that 
I feel has really helped me with pray it off is that I started examining my life. Where am I and how did I get here and what am I doing? And God, be a part of that. Lead me, guide me, show me the way. Sometimes looking at yourself is painful. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more. I'm going to stop right there, Bob. <laughs>